SpaceX is testing the world's most powerful rocket at Starbase, Texas. And within the next few weeks, we should know if there's going to be a wet dress rehearsal and a static fire of 33 Raptor 2 engines on the booster. Every time that the booster has static fired, it has destroyed the concrete underneath the launch pad. We brought this up in a few other videos. And we all know that destroying concrete underneath a delicate rocket is a bad thing. And just recently, we saw that they will be moving parts of a deluge system and possibly a flame diverter towards Starbase, Texas from Florida. And this is all caught on camera by the NASA space flight crew because they have robot cameras all over the place on every launch site, it seems like. These tubes and pipes that are coming into Starbase, Texas might not be implemented anytime soon. SpaceX and Elon Musk have also said that they're going to be taking their time with Starbase. They're going to be taking their time with this orbital flight test. And could they spend months possibly implementing this deluge system and maybe the flame diverter before the launch actually happens to mitigate any sort of circumstances that could harm the Starship on the launch? Now, just recently, Elon Musk said, in February or March, there's a pretty good chance that they'll be launching this thing. But if they need to use a flame diverter, if they're going to stop anything from happening from this concrete underneath the Starship, it's going to take them a while to get it implemented. And this could be a very basic implementation. And SpaceX is known for implementing things quickly and also upgrading them as they go. If they do something that's very basic, they could upgrade it within the next few months to make it absolutely perfect for flight number two of a starship. And if SpaceX chooses to do this before the orbital flight test, we could be looking at a test in June, July, August, maybe September of 2023. Now, that's not something that we want to see. We don't want to wait for a long time for this thing. But you got to remember that this is a very important, possibly the most important space flight in human history. This could change everything about human space flight. So it could take them a while to get this implemented before the first orbital flight test of Starship. And on Twitter, Alex, which is at AlexPhysics13, tweeted out some photos from NASA spaceflight, but also tweeted out this message right here. There are four small tanks five sets of high pressure gas tanks and at least three larger tanks, as well as several tubes and manifolds believed to be for a deluge system for Starbase. It's a crazy amount of hardware for sure. Now, Alex has a point here. There's a ton of hardware coming into SpaceX Starbase, Texas. Now, if this is going to be implemented in the near future, it could take them weeks, possibly months. If they implement all of these high pressure gas tanks, four small tanks, three larger tanks, and several tubes and manifolds. It could take them months just to test this to make sure that it works right before the first flight test. And even though we're talking about delays of the Starship, there's a possibility that they still do get it launched in February or March of this year. So that's only a few weeks away if you count it by the weeks. But the FCC just regranted a license to SpaceX for the experimental orbital demo and recovery test of the Starship test vehicle from Starbase, Texas. Now, this is the FCC, not the FAA. And the FCC basically is allowing SpaceX to transmit signals from a Starship using SpaceX's Starlink to a ground station so they can communicate with the spacecraft and get telemetry data as it launches. The Starlink could also be used to transmit video back to Starbase, Texas, so they can broadcast it on their YouTube channel for everybody to see during the launch. Now, this is an important point that I want to make here. If this hardware is going to be used for the first orbital flight test for the deluge system of the first Starship and the booster, the FAA might step in. They may have to get more environmental approval for the millions of gallons that it's going to take for a deluge system for a starship. Where are they going to put all that water? Are there going to be giant tanks that it's going to flood into? Or is it going to flood the area around Starbase? Flooding the area around Starbase is not good because it's a protected national environmental space. 
and SpaceX cannot damage that. It's a no-no. They can't do that. And that's why they have to possibly, and I don't want this to happen because I want them to launch this thing as soon as possible, but they may have to get another environmental assessment. And this is kind of a good thing in a way because SpaceX could be building the next generation of Starship while this is all happening. And the first orbital flight test may go off without a hitch because they took their time and they were safe about it. And you want the first launch to go off flawlessly because this will be the rocket that sends people to the surface of the moon again. Also for the Polaris program and also the Dear Moon project, which will see people go around the moon and come back down to the surface of the Earth. This could delay SpaceX months, possibly a year, if they need to implement this system before everything is launched and the FAA steps in and does another environmental assessment. We saw how long the last one was. Over six months just for an environmental assessment. This one might be a little bit less because there's not as many moving parts that the FAA has to go through, but there's a possibility that they do delay the launch if SpaceX implements this beforehand. And this is an interesting tidbit that I came upon. On the NASA Airborne Science Program website, SpaceX Starship launch was meant to be January 20th, 2023. And if you look into it a little bit deeper, there's a WB-57 plane that's ready to do the science for the Starship. And the WB-57 plane, this thing will be tracking the Starship as it comes back from the orbital flight test. But more importantly, it's going to be watching the heat tiles on the Starship. And this will allow SpaceX and NASA to gather data from this craft in order to make any preparations for future flights of the Starship. SpaceX just recently launched a new Starlink mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base, and Vandenberg tweeted this out. Congratulations on the first launch of 2023 from VSFB. Since 1958, there have been 2023 launches on the base. This launch also makes the 100th launch from SLC-4E since 1964. That is an amazing feat by Vandenberg Space Force Base and by SpaceX. And here's a few photos from Vandenberg of the launch. If you could do me a favor and hit the like button with maximum dynamic pressure and also subscribe to the channel because you get something out of this that I don't get out of it. If you subscribe, you get recommended other spaceflight channels by YouTube, people that aren't me. And also you get some of my stuff every once in a while. That'd be cool. I'm happy to have you, but you'll get more SpaceX, more NASA, more space flight content from numerous creators across the platform. So take a second, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Two links over there. Why was I putting it two different places? I was putting over here and over here. There can't be a link right there. There's not enough room. Like, I mean, I guess there could be a link above me. I'm going to put a link right there and then one over there. That'll be space flight content, and this will be the subscribe button. Okay, we figured it out together. Thanks. All right, see you in the next one.